this economic value of mm. languages is driving language debt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You yeah. fail to adapt, mm. Mm. you die. You lose, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you adapt. Exactly. At the end of the day, code switching is just adapting your way of speaking to a certain group of people. Hello and welcome to today's special episode of Chatterbox. I'm Ben, also known as the Smiling Afro, your host. And this episode is all about languages in Singapore. And I have special guests here today and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, I'm Hanuman. Uh, I'm an educator. And one interesting fact about me is I really enjoy nature and wildlife. Hi guys, um, my name is Fine or Cody Brody or the Oxford Linguist Guy. I go by many names, put it that way. <laughs> Um, I'm currently a student studying psychology and linguistics. And one fun fact about me is I also really like wildlife and nature and I have a lot of orchids. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. I'm an NTU undergraduate studying linguistics and English. And a fun fact about me is that I'm half French, half Singaporean. Ooh. <laughs> fun fact about me, why there is curly hair on this Chinese looking face is because I'm Eurasian and I got this from my great grandmother who was Dutch Indonesian on my dad's side. So yes, this is what you get apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to begin with a short game called This or That to break the ice a bit, okay? I'll give you guys two words, then I'll say three, two, one, and you'll say either one of the words that you prefer most, okay, at the same time. So, this or that? Duolingo or drops? 3, 2, 1. Duolingo. What's drops? <laughs> I, I don't even know what's drops, by the way. What's but... drops? Ah? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that Yeah, so I just assumed that it was. Okay, okay. Yeah, I assume it's close to Duolingo. I said Duolingo because I, that's yeah. the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, what kind of drops? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also say, I, will, I will also say Duolingo because it's free. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, okay. yes. uh, I use Duolingo when I am learning the basics of a language. But then you won't really develop from there. And I guess that's where the mistake comes with a lot of people who use Duolingo where it's like, oh, if I finish this course and I have my like 900 day streak, I'm gonna be fluent in Vietnamese. Yep. It's not true. And then you go to Vietnam, you're like, oh no. <laughs> Next on this or that, okay? How do you prefer to learn a new language? Auditory or visual? In three, two, one. Auditory. Auditory. Visual. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Firstly, I would like to see how it's spelled. Mm. Okay. Mm. And then to make mm. sense of how is this sentence actually used. I mean, you can't use one, just visual. Yeah, you have to use both when you're yeah. learning language. But the way you say it and the way you spell it is actually not always the same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You see like French word, eh? mm. it may be spelled this way. But yeah. the way you, you pronounce it is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Learning a new language, reading books, or watch a movie? In three, two, one. Reading watch a movie. movie. <laughs> watch a movie for me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm visual. Yeah. Right. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, probably just a Gen Z thing. I probably uh, just have a very short attention span. <laughs> <laughs> so I prefer to watch moving picture. Wow. <laughs> I was learning Spanish also, and I will watch uh, Money Heist. Yes, uh, and on La Casa de Papel, <laughs> right? And I will watch it uh, with, I mean, of course, English subtitles, but I just love seeing the way they speak. It's so mm -hmm. frank, it's not too formal. Yes. So that's yeah. when I know, uh, that's generally how the people speak normally. And you learn how to swear. Learn. Using Singlish or Standard English in 3, 2, 1. Singlish it depends English. who's my target audience is. Mm -hmm. That's fair. If I'm that's buying fair. something at a hawker centre, I would definitely use Singlish. Mm -hmm. mm. The whole idea of communication is to be understood. You mm. speak standard English and the other person doesn't understand it. And mm. Mm. What's the point, right? Mm -hmm. Might as well talk to a stone or a wall, <laughs> right? It's an identifier yeah. of who, where we come from with you know, the previous lingua franca being like Pasar mm. Melayu yeah. or like Hokkien among the Chinese community mm. and seeing mm. that culminate. I think that's a very beautiful thing and I think mm. that's why I say It English. is a unifying yes. factor. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You go abroad, you hear Singapore <coughs> Yeah. Yeah. Oh my ah, people. Ne, ne. My people. That one, that one, that one. My people. <laughs> that yeah, one. Yeah. That one behind the camera. <laughs> yeah, it just feels I like I like it. It just feels great. Yeah. yeah. Learn a third language 
or brush up on your mother tongue. In three, two, one. Mother tongue. Oh, mother tongue. Mother tongue. Yes. My maternal grandmother. She only speaks Malay. My Malay is really bad, and oh. I feel that distance with her. So. I, I've been trying, I, and I wish that Duolingo had a Malay, like <laughs> Bahasa Melayu, because I feel like that would be really like beneficial to a lot of uh, people, especially like I feel like Singaporeans uh, in Singapore lose a lot of their mother tongue. Speak in English or prefer speaking in mother tongue at home? In three, two, one. English. 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 It's convenient. Could you share a personal experience that highlights the importance of multilingualism in Singapore or anywhere else in the world? A year ago, I, I did this project uh, for my school. I basically researched on an endangered Singaporean language called Kristang. Kristang, yeah. Kristang, yeah. Shout out to my Eurasian folks. <laughs> yeah, which is, uh, if you guys don't know, it's uh, Malaccan and Portuguese descent. Yep. And we actually had the opportunity to interview uh, this girl who actually, uh, her grandmother spoke Kristang. And the girl could even sing uh, in Kristang, which was really wow. interesting. And discovering like the way the words are, are pronounced and just, it was just so, such a beautiful experience. And it made me realize that it's too bad that like, I mean, Singapore does a lot for its mother tongues. Mm. I'm not saying yep, it doesn't it does. do a lot for its mother yep, tongues. It I just think that like Singapore has so many languages that too little people know about. Mm. It's a brotherhood thing. Yeah. The minute I can speak your language, mm. that kinship is already been bonded there. Yeah. You see, in China right now, they are expanding into the Middle East. Mm. Chinese are Africa. learning Arabic. I think on the flip side, one thing that is the trouble is that this economic value of mm. languages is driving language death. Mm. Right. And so, talking about you know what is the importance of multilingualism, what is the importance of our heritage languages mm. in the context of Singapore is it does tie us to our ethnic identity, and I think it also ties us to our history and where we come from. Definitely. What do you personally think of Singlish as a language? I think Singlish as a language, okay, uh, local context, uh, is a very, very strong unifying factor for Singapore. I definitely saw uh, the importance of Singlish in Singaporean literature as well, because a lot of Singaporean uh, poets or even just writers, they use Singlish as a way to, you know, fight back against colonization. Yeah. And I just love that re-empowerment of mm. reasserting Singaporean culture. Yeah. And I think it's definitely that really, there. yeah, it's like Majula Singapura. Ah! You know? <laughs> the con of speaking Singlish, right, is. A population, the government was worried the whole population won't be able to speak proper English with like potential, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Insane, yeah. which know, is which uh, is why code switching is very very important. Yeah. And yeah. I yeah. think the, the 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 country has matured. Yes, it has. You know, yeah. people that, yeah. are way more exposed to a lot of uh, different forms of yeah. speaking and communication. Yeah. And I think the majority of, of of us are able to code switch. Yeah, yes. You know? yeah. I think the idea is without that speak good English movement, the country just automatically, we just we just understood, okay, this is English, this is English. Yeah. And we yeah. know when to do it. We, yeah. we, we, didn't to, yeah. we didn't have to be reminded by anyone. Yeah. yeah. Or a campaign. What is the cultural impact that Singlish has in this country? I think negative impact would be how comfortable we start to get when we start mm -hmm. talking to other people who are not Singaporean. And as you know, mm -hmm. there is a huge influx of foreigners coming. Uh, and rightfully so, you know, because for whatever talent that they have to contribute here. Mm. I guess yeah. I would go off of the negative effects that you said. And I think, mm. I, I mean, I think growing up, you are, you obviously have a, a parent who's from a different country, mm. right? And in Singapore, there are obviously children of people who are mm. very recent immigrants as well. In a way, it's like when they come here, they eventually start learning it because yeah. they also want to Correct. connect with us. Correct. Yep. Yep. Right? And yep. I guess yes. because it's, what, it's, it's here, right? It's the, the simulation already. process. Yeah. It's the quote-unquote yeah. quote, simulation yeah. process, right? It's this, again, okay, patchwork thing right, that we're yeah. talking about. Right, and I would say that, like, for example, one of my really good friends, like, her parents are Canadian, like, white Canadians, mm. right? But she was born and raised here. And so, 
It's really funny because her mother speaks Singlish with a Canadian accent. <laughs> she speaks Singlish with the with wow. the like the with like the she she will say about and sorry. <laughs> La. <laughs> and like it's integration and most, right there. And, and, yeah. and the integration right is that is that I guess Singapore is that Singlish is that culturally unifying factor where it's like people who come from other places which speak mm. quote unquote yeah. good proper standardized English. Yeah. Oh, sorry, government. <laughs> <laughs> Right, they come here and then they are, are able to do that. I mean, for example, like my same friend, like like she's very like she's blonde, like got like you know, she's blonde, she's mm. like very pale skin. Mm. But she talks like this, right? Mm. And like that's such a unifying factor for her, even in you know, now she's studying in the UK. And like when we all talk together, like she's just one of us, right? It's the mm. same thing. It's, mm. it's this, it's you we don't she's not seen as and other in that sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I love, yeah. you know, on the point of like how it's a unifying uh, thing, right? Is how Singlish has been derived from different parts of Malay, yeah. Mandarin, mm. even Tamil, mm. yeah. or basic uh, English mm. and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. 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 So it belongs yeah. to. I love because it belongs to everyone. Everyone, yeah. Everyone it doesn't belong. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't yeah. belong to. Oh, just my my people's culture. Correct, no, correct. Yeah. we all had a part to play. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, God knows how everyone <laughs> just made it into, and yeah. everyone just agreed. No one, no one had. Just, there was no yeah. rule book written. <laughs> everyone just understood this is the way it's going to be spoken. I just like the impact that Singlish has on a whole person. That even though they're from another country, like once they're in Singapore, once they learn the language, they and speak. once they know Singlish, they automatically like they know the whole culture in a sense. Yeah. In a way, yeah. yeah. In a way. <clears throat> According to an article written by the Society for Linguistic Anthropology. Mm. When Singaporeans use the term code switching, it is rarely in a sense that linguistic anthropologists or linguists understand it. Okay, example, to describe how multilingual speakers navigate among different languages present in Singapore. Rather, when we say code switching, it is used most often to describe Singaporeans' ability to switch between Singlish and good English. So, what are your thoughts? On this definition of code switching, I know you guys have shared. I mean, these are just yeah. semantics of yeah. all these academics, right. lah. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, when you speak, you want to be understood by yeah. your audience. Yeah. Whether I'm speaking Singlish, whether I'm speaking Standard English, mm. yeah. whoever I'm speaking to understands what I'm saying, with yeah. regardless of what language I'm using. That's all that I. Yeah. I agree with that because I feel like and at the end of the day, code switching is just adapting your way of speaking to a certain group of people, you know? So it doesn't matter whether like it's a different language or like it's like, those are just like specifics that like don't really matter. At the end of the day, you're just like adapting. Yeah, exactly. It's just adapting. It's, it's, it's yeah. very Darwinian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. fail to adapt. Mm, mm. You don't. Yeah. You do. Yeah. 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 So you adapt. Exactly. Yeah. Regardless yeah. how it's done. Mm. Don't compartmentalize it and say, yeah, this exactly. is this, mm. this is this, yeah. this is that. No. But yeah, Shut but up, we're like, humans. Yeah. We're and just humans. Yeah, exactly. We just want to communicate. Yeah, as long as the communication is done, like that's, yeah, we're good. You guys feel that speaking to youths Right, like the young people, maybe let's say uh, primary school, yeah. speaking use in Singlish will make it difficult for them to learn standard English. I don't think so. Because I don't think any of us had an yeah. yeah. issue, right? I, I highly disagree because I feel like they already learn standardized English in school. Yeah. And every day they go to school. Yeah. So, like, Singlish is part of like our culture, and so it's like when you go home, it's nice to have like that touch, mm. yeah. you know? Like that home touch, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's that thing about prescriptivism. Like prescriptivism, mm -hmm. again, like I said earlier, prescriptivism has its time and place, and it yeah. has its place in formalized education, and its place in formal, mm -hmm. in like settings where, like you know, you 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 need to bridge connections, right? Yeah. You need to bridge gaps. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But then, like, and obviously that's the bridge to gap between Singaporeans and foreigners, or like, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe Singaporeans who lived abroad and they come back and don't really know, right? Mm. But then, obviously, that is the place only, right? When we come out of it. Like, who, who does that? Like, who is going to be like, you cannot speak English at home. You cannot speak English in yeah. public. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. avoid talking to these kids. These kids <laughs> are exposed to English everywhere. So everywhere. obviously, they will learn standard English. Obviously, when I talk to people in the UK, I use formal English and I've never lived there before. Right, and I, I came back to the US when I, was, I came back from the US when I was very young. But still, I know how to speak formal English. So mm. I don't think you suffer because of that. Or mm. like, I guess that's the backbone of multilingual yeah. education as a whole. Yeah. Is you teach these standardized forms but they go out into the world and language is its own piece. Now that we know a little more about language in Singapore, let's learn more about the history of our local languages. So during the 1960s, in case you didn't know, 
Singapore was part of the Federation of Malaysia and its population naturally possessed multilingual abilities. It was common for individuals of Chinese origin to fluently speak Malay and for those of Indian descent to be proficient in Mandarin and even for Malays to converse in Tamil without surprise. What challenges do you guys see regarding the use and preservation of heritage languages in Singapore? It's exhausting because we, you know, these languages are valuable, right, to us. I guess individually, from a cultural perspective, they are very valuable. But from a global economic perspective, English being the lingua franca of the world and of global commerce, which I have made my distaste very well known on the internet. <laughs> of which, yes. <laughs> right? We, it's, it's, there's such, such a big hurdle because it's like, oh, why should I learn Tamil? Why should I learn Malay? Why should I learn Mandarin? Like, even Mandarin, right? You can talk to people from China, but sometimes people from China, they just speak English. Right? I agree. My beef with anything language or mother tongue, and I speak from the Malay perspective, is that the quality of content that is done in that language tends to focus more on sensationalization. Whether you're talking about gossips, la, celebrity, mm. la, you know, hantu story, la, you know, that kind of thing. But intellectual discourse in that language, very difficult to get this. But I completely agree with you. Because for, for me, it's like, especially for Malay, because um, it's the one that I'm would say I'm most exposed to. Mm. It's mostly used for like, yeah, for gossip or for like, uh, a lot of like, unfortunately, or maybe it's just my family is like talking negatively. Yeah. <laughs> or like, uh, just casual discussions and we don't delve into like, the more serious mm. topics. It's unfortunate because the language could be like, delve deeper. We could speak about so many different things and so many different topics that could be uh, spoken about, especially like different languages have different meanings in their words, you yeah. know? Mm. Like they bring different things to the table. So it's such a shame because we don't see those amazing things from those languages brought into yep. like, spoken Malay, mm. at least in Singapore. Do you guys believe it holds importance for young individuals to acquire proficiency in multiple languages? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. I think this whole idea of we shouldn't speak to them or rather, you know, if we speak to them, then they don't understand. It's, it becomes a chicken and egg. You don't speak to them, you don't expose them to They'll the language. They'll never pick it up. They'll never pick it up. Yes. You see? So, when I interact with <clears throat> teachers, for example, they say, oh, I speak to the child in, in, in Malay, but they reply me in yeah. I said, yep, yeah, fine, fair enough. You translate that. The reason why the child replies to you in English is because the child mm. has never heard what that reply is in Malay. Mm. If I don't know what it sounds in this language, mm. how am I ever going to speak in that language again? Multilingualism is actually really good and I think there was a study that showed that... Um, it called it, dementia. Yes, exactly, yes. that's what yeah. I was going to say. And the fact that you have this tool to like, you, I mean in Singapore you have the opportunity to learn mm. two, like at least have two languages oh, that are, yeah. yes exactly, that are of your identity yeah. and a lot of people miss that opportunity to uh, really pick up those languages as well as that. So now we're going to move on to our final segment, a very fun game. We're going to play Know Your Singlish. Mm. Mm, so, <laughs> so all of our guests have whiteboards in front of them and we'll be writing down the Singlish version of these standard English words or phrases that I will say. <laughs> oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> so are you guys ready? Can. As ready as I can be. <laughs> as ready as you can be, right? Yes. All right. The first word in English is iced black coffee. So the Singlish word for iced black coffee. Okay, ready? <laughs> and please reveal your answers. All right. So we have kopi ping gao, kopi ping gosong, and kopi that's all. <laughs> the correct answer is Kopi O Peng. Oh. Yes. So I believe Kopi is just 
coffee with the condensed milk. <laughs> I drink tea. Oh, you were like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> to be fair, if so you coffee, drink ice, plain, like if you drink kopi or thing, <laughs> yeah. you are, you, you have a, a stomach, I will, I will envy the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so next word in English is dips. Like, like uh, you know, you call your dips on something. Mm. So what is the Singlish word for calling dips? <laughs> I think lah. Mm. <laughs> should be right. Uh, should be lah. Uh. Should be guys. Should be. Ready so and reveal. Nice. We have chop, chop, and chop. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, <laughs> and, yes, and the correct answer is chop. Ah, yes. ah, 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 correct. I meant you chop, it, but I didn't. But to be like fair, it, yeah. there's some versions where yeah, we I say chop. <laughs> <laughs> There's some versions where we say chop. Next word in English is you have to try this. Ready? <laughs> and please reveal. Okay. <laughs> we have three very different answers. We have, I believe, nah. nah. <laughs> like the Mandarin <laughs> nah, give, take, right? We have must try, 100, 100. And <laughs> must try one. <laughs> the correct answer is Die die must try. Oh, so you have to try this. Die die must try. <laughs> but so basically you got halfway there lah. Halfway point. Halfway point. Must yeah. try. <laughs> right. The next word in English is busybody. What is the Singlish word for busybody? Very commonly used, especially growing up. <laughs> All right. And please reveal your answers. Oh, correct, I will. Ah, but you get that she got very, the idea, right? She got the idea. So, nice. so Kepo, and the correct answer is <laughs> Kepo indeed. Yay. Yes. Why are you so Kepo? That one, mm. if you spell it in Malay, it's Kepo. Kepo. Oh, yeah. Which means? Yeah. Same thing, right? No. Same meaning. No? no. What does Kepo mean? Does it mean? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Next word. What is the Singlish word for competitive? Competitive. So, okay, uh, please review your answers. <laughs> yes, kiasu, kiasu, and I don't know. Okay, never mind. Know. It's okay. The, the more they direct translation is scared to lose. Scared kiasu to lose. is scared to lose. So very scared to die is kiasu. Yes. Kiasu, oh. kiasu. So, this Singlish word, it's, a v it's the verb to chill. To chill? The oh. verb to chill in Singlish. I will say it's a little bit close to home for you. Okay, Let's so... Let's see whether it's half Mina or Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No, I, I went with, uh, it's a bit close to home, but he went half Mina. Let's see whether you know. <laughs> <laughs> and please reveal the answers. Hey, well, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. But, yeah, but to be fair, okay. she's not wrong. Yeah, she's not wrong. She's not wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, the answer is but, Lepak. Yeah. <laughs> Lepak. That's also correct though. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, so, uh, I'm but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least she put it. At least she put Malay word. Uh. At least she put Malay word. Yeah. <laughs> what is a Singlish phrase for to do something at your own pace? Clue. You hear this a lot in military. Yep. And please reveal your answers. Ha <laughs> 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 oh, ha! time on target. <laughs> oh. My grandmother faster than you. I heard that a lot in the nest. My grandmother ran faster than you. Well, to be fair, the English version is my grandmother runs faster than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And question mark. Uh, okay, so the correct target. the correct one is actually own time. Own yeah, target. Own time, own target. Own time. Own so at uh, your own time and your own target. Yes. O T O T. O T O T, yes. Next one. What is the Singlish word for tired? Okay, ready? And three, two, one. What's nakti though? I want to sleep. I want to sleep, sleep in Malay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, not know. really wrong lah, but... <laughs> I didn't have it. So the correct answer is shag. Yes, S-H-A-G. And it's, very, it's like, you say like, you don't you just say shag. Shags, yeah? Shags, yeah. Shags, yeah. Actually, the original spelling was this shag, like this. Yeah. So it comes from a dance oh, that was popular. So you would shag out. So that's why something, I'm shag out. It's because you, you would dance the shag until you're shag out. Right, so God really? Knows. Yeah. I Honestly. thought it was the dog shaking the body. I'm doing a video on this, when guys. The body. Stay tuned to my TikTok at <laughs> Finance. <laughs> All right, the last word, my friends. What is the Singlish word for secluded or inaccessible? 
Jadi, Afina kan orang ni. Yeah, lebih lebih close to home. Tak boleh. Tak boleh. Tak boleh. Alright, please review the answers. Ulu. Oh yes, Ulu is the correct answer. Ulu. Ada friend juga si Ulu. 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 And the winner is. Alright, that was a really fun game. Thank you very much for playing. I hope you all enjoyed that segment. And to end off, I have one last question for our guests. So, what is one final piece of advice that you will give for the viewers out there, especially those who want to get into linguistic? Linguistic, approach it with an open mind. That's all. I mean, linguistics and languages tell you so much about people. Tells you so much about where they come from and all that. And so I think linguistics itself approach it with an excitement and an open mind. Yeah. That that you said earlier, excitement, open mind, and you know, with this love for human beings. I would say that linguistics is a really good field because you learn a lot about cultures, you learn about long a lot about languages. Uh, there's so much to learn, and there's so many different segments that you can get into and you can specialize in. So yeah, I think it's a beautiful field to get into. Yeah. Awesome. So for anyone looking to get into linguistics, I hope they have inspired you. All right, we've come to the end of this episode. I am Ben, the Smiling Afro. I've been your host, signing off. If you've enjoyed this episode, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye bye. Bye bye.